I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak with you about religious freedom and prisoners of conscience in India. We are all particularly honored to be here today with Kasim Rasu Ilyas, whose son, Umar Khalid, has bravely and unflinchingly advocated for religious minorities in India at great risk, great risk to his personal safety. Kasim, your son's advocacy is truly admirable and the highest example of why pressing for religious freedom in India remains so important. Thank you so much for being here today. As many of you know, USURF is an independent, bipartisan U.S. federal government body dedicated to promoting the universal right to freedom of religion or belief abroad. USURF seeks to defend religious freedom internationally for people of all faiths and for none. Throughout the year, we monitor religious freedom conditions abroad and make policy recommendations to the President, Department of State, and Congress. We can be a nudge, a scold, an advocate, a voice, unflinching and calling out countries that throttle the chance for free expression of faith. But we can also be a help, an advocate, a partner, and a friend to countries which live up to their commitments for religious freedom at home. USURF is grateful for the work all of you do raising awareness of the challenges for religious freedom in India and the information you develop and share all around the globe to keep a spotlight on conditions there. Your work informs the research and reporting so many of us do, including at USURF, and we are thankful, very grateful, to all of you. Last month, USURF held a hearing on U.S. policy challenges related to religious freedom in India, during which commissioners raised concerns about discriminatory laws that disproportionately target religious minorities. The National Government of India uses the so-called Unlawful Activities Prevention Act to conduct surveillance harassment, and detention of people of faith. State and local governments have implemented legal restrictions in recent years that negatively impact Muslims, Christians, Sikhs, Dalits, and indigenous and scheduled tribal people. Muslims and Christians are the two largest groups detained for their religious belief in India. It's clear that Indian authorities have arrested both Muslims and Christians under false claims of facilitating forced conversions, and religious clerics have been accused of arranging marriages. Laws prohibiting cow slaughter also disproportionately affect the country's Muslim, Christian, and Dalit populations and inflame mob violence against individuals accused of eating beef, killing cows, or just transporting cattle. The Indian government's detention of individuals for expressing their religious beliefs or for advocating on behalf of religious minorities has become a widespread phenomenon. And while you, surf and you follow and report on the general trends in India against religious freedom, we all know that these violations are much more than just overall numbers. For example, activists have been detained for advocating on behalf of Dalits, as illustrated by the notable arrests in 2020 of 16 advocates in Bhima, Corrigan, where caste-based violence broke out in 2018. While many Dalits are Hindu, they often face discrimination and violence and lack of recognition in Hindu society. Among those arrested, as mentioned earlier, were Father Stan Swamy, an 83-year-old Jesuit priest and tribal rights activist, and the oldest person ever accused of terrorism in the country of India. Swamy's requests for bail were repeatedly denied, despite his deteriorating health, and he eventually died in custody. Terrible. USURF maintains a public database of individuals known to have been detained on the basis of the peaceful exercise 
of their freedom of religion or belief. This database, named the Frank R. Wolf Freedom of Religion or Belief Victims List, currently includes many individuals across multiple faiths in India. I'd like to talk about one of those people today, Umar Khalid. We know that India detains student activists and journalists for their religious freedom reporting and advocacy and for protesting discriminatory legislation such as the Citizenship Amendment Act. This includes Umar Khalid. As a staunch defender of religious minorities, Umar rose to prominence as a university student peacefully, peacefully protesting against the CAA. Arrested in September 2020, Umar continues to languish in jail, held under the UAPA. Umar is one of dozens of activists who have been arrested in connection with their advocacy efforts. USURF closely monitors the situation of all those in India on our wolf victims list. We raise these cases with the State Department and other entities with interest in a positive and productive relationship with India. We strongly urge policy recommendations that take these abuses seriously, especially the importance of the United States in its designation of India as a country of particular concern, or CPC, in the coming months, and not letting India off the hook from the consequences of a CPC designation with some sort of scummy waiver. When it comes to India, from restrictive laws to unjust imprisonments, all of us share a common concern and hope that India can chart a newer and better path in the years to come. We want our wolf victims list to go to zero for India and India to become a real beacon for religious freedom in the world. So together, with firmness of purpose, clarity of vision, and certainty in our cause, we will fight for religious freedom as our hearts demand, our will commands, our legs can stand, and all our voices shout. Together, united for religious freedom, we say, onward, ever onward.